Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. This particular footage would be a special one because instead of having three things for me to introduce, it's going to be four. And I hope it wouldn't be an issue for you guys since that means I have to be uh, a bit out of the grid when it comes to alphabetical. And I hope you guys would understand and such, you know? It, it just happened to be the case. So for this, first out of the four things I'm going to introduce is a character known as the Abominable Snow Girl. And if you guys bear with me, I'll do all that I can to make it comprehensible and make things work on your guys' behalf, so hope you could bear with me. Here it is. Abominable Snow Girl. Real name, Abby Winters. Height, 100 feet. Weight, 57 tons. Status, hero, and ruler of the Frozen. Base, all frozen areas. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, witty, confident, and adventurous. She'll do anything to protect anywhere involving the bitter cold. She only eats things that are frozen. Lethality. Only to those who wish to harm any cold area. Weaknesses, high temperatures. Powers. She has great size and strength and is hard to kill. She can project streams of cold from her hands can create avalanches and blizzards, can perform ice-based teleportation, is immune to bitter cold, and can bring snow and ice to anywhere she goes. She can communicate with and control all animals that reside in any frozen area. She's also good at hiding. Eyes, silver. Hair, pale white in braided pigtails. Origin. Abby Winters was a young teenager who enjoyed the cold parts of the world as she traveled with her scientist parents. One day, while traveling in the Arctic Circle, they were attacked by the villainous Gigantica, who killed Abby's parents and left her to die of hypothermia. Hours later, Abby was rescued by a traveling Stilts, who went to hike after a long day at work, and Stilts saved her by using a spell that makes her one with every cold environment. And just so you know, Stilts is the adopted brother, no, typo, adopted daughter and um, successor to Santa, basically. However, the spell had a few unintended side effects that took Abby through a special transformation. Since then, Abby was so tall that each foot was twice the size of an average house, and she's recently protecting all the frozen lands of the default Earth. When not protecting any of the frozen lands, the abominable snow girl would spend her time with Stilts, who became her lifelong friend after being saved from the cold. Costume. She wears a blue hooded winter coat, matching winter jeans, fingered gloves, and a large pair of snow cleats all of which protect her from harm. Teams, solitary, with stilts, or with other heroes. Order of inspiration, snow spirits. I hope that was a decent one for you. The next one is when it will be outside of alphabetical. Instead of going with the next one being B, I'm going to do a Q, which is followed by a B. And you will understand how and why that is the case once I uh, explain it to you guys and such. Here it is. Queen Conga. Real name, Kelly Isles. Height, 600 feet. Weight, 97,400 tons. Status, hero and co-ruler of Africana. Base, Africana, the Alpha Earth Mobile. Intelligence, three brains. Behavior. Flirtatious and cheerful, 
She's only dangerous to anything negative. Lethality, as above. Weaknesses, rejection, and the taste of rotting meat. Powers. She has great size and strength, high agility, acute senses, and uncanny hunting skills. Her main weapon is a single-edged bone dagger. She can also make a primal call that could be heard from thousands of miles away. Eyes, bluish-green. Hair, light blonde in chin length. Origin. One time, there is a married couple and their daughter who survived the wrecking of a cruise ship to the shores of Africana, a primal island inhabited with deadly creatures. When the parents soon died from the native predators, however, there was a quarrel between Goddess and Cosmic on behalf of the baby Kelly Isles. And although Goddess won the debate, Cosmic placed a curse on the baby that involves departing from Africana. Over the years, Kelly grew in both size and wisdom while living on the island. One day, a traveling quantum found her and invited her back to the mainland. But when Queen Conga stepped onto the coastal boundaries, stepped into the coastal boundaries, her curse was finally ignited and she became an ever-growing tyrant. Eventually, Queen Conga was cleansed of her curse after being defeated by a visiting Colossa, and Queen Conga was later pardoned of her actions. Nowadays, Queen Conga would spend her time hunting for food in Africana, which included dinosaurs, centipedes, megamermians, and carnivorous plants. Costume. She wears a tiger-striped top with matching shorts. Teams, solitary, or with other heroes. Original inspiration, jungle people. The next one is basically the evil counterpart of Queen Conga, known as Bad Conga. And I just figured that if I introduced Queen Conga first, then you guys would have a better understanding on who Bad Conga is. You know? So I apologize to everyone who's offended by it no longer being alphabetical as intended. I hope you guys could forgive me. Bad Conga. Real name, inapplicable. Height and weight, utterly increasing. Status, villain, and servant of Cosmic. Base, Cosmic Slayer. Intelligence. Three and a half brains. Behavior. Stubborn and destructive. She'll do anything to destroy Queen Conga. Lethality, as above. She's a rising threat to society. Weaknesses, her greatest power. She's easily carried away. Powers, she has the same powers as Queen Conga, along with having total ruthlessness and uncontrollable growing. Eyes, blood red. Hair, light gold, in a short bob. Origin, one time, Cosmic decided to not have the curse she gave Queen Conga to be laid to waste. She later created the evil counterpart of Queen Conga, which Cosmic chose to name Bad Conga. After commanding her to destroy Queen Conga, Bad Conga ended up fighting her innocent counterpart until realizing that she couldn't stop growing. Eventually, Bad Conga outgrew the cosmos until Vortex transported her back to the lair of her creator and master, where her growing powers were then regulated. Since then, Bad Conga would try to keep her growing problem from becoming an advantage for her opponents to use. Costume. She wears the same clothes as Queen Conga. Team Solitary for Cosmic and other villains. Original Inspiration, Queen Conga. This is the very last one that I'm going to introduce in terms of the data sheets for this video, and I hope you guys are bearing with me and such. Captain Explosion. Real name, Captain Wenda Powders. Height, 6 foot 7. Weight, 243 pounds. Status, anti-hero and military captain. Base, default earth and mobile. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, willful and moody. She always loves to be right about something. Lethality, only when angered or during a fight. 
Weaknesses, antimatter. She's easily angered. Powers. She has a variety of nuclear-based powers, including flight, nuclear absorption, nuclear shock waves, projecting nuclear energy from any part of her body, and the ability to mutate other organisms. She could turn into a beam of nuclear energy with nearly infinite nuclear power at the cost of her self-control. She also has uncanny word usage. Eyes, deep green, hair, bright blonde, and spiky. Origin. Captain Wenda Powders is a no-nonsense military captain who always wished for power in order to succeed with life objectives. One day, Wenda barely survived a nuclear blast from Mother Russia, the physical equivalent of the country of Russia. And afterwards, Wenda found that she developed some nuclear-based capabilities that she could put to proper use. Eventually, she saved the city of Tokyork from a rampaging general carnage by draining her of most of her nuclear energy. Despite that general carnage, could recover the energy in her DNA. Since then, Wender was given the code name Captain Explosion and would do whatever it takes to protect the USA. Costume. She normally wears semi-formal Captain clothes, but in her nuclear form, she simply doesn't need to wear anything due to uh, proper regulations and such, if you know what I mean. You know? Teams. Solitary, with general carnage, and others. Original inspiration, nuclear energy, and duck dynasty. Well, I hope you guys appreciate that I made four stuff instead of three for this video. And uh, just so you guys know, my birthday is coming up on the 26th, which is also my dad's birthday. And I hope I could make another... Um, live post on my Facebook eventually. I hope I would do things correctly and make things work in the long run. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. And if you have any more comments and questions, you know, second mention. I hope you guys have a fine rest of your July. And I hope that my birthday and my dad's birthday would be successful and such alongside my Ames family reunion and such. But until next time on Leviathan, hope you guys are willing to learn more in the future, but yet again, it's all on you guys. Until next time, in transmission.